Hello again, it's Cal from Wise Guys Tutoring, and uh, today we're going to be finishing off that MSAT Math Specimen Paper of 2020. We'll be doing questions 31 to 35, and as usual, I'll be trying to give you guys a, a little background on each topic, not just answering the question. That way you can have a better understanding. Um, so let's do question 31. It says, triangle ADE is the image of triangle ABC after a dilation of scale factor K centered at the origin. Which statement is always true? Um, so there was another question about similar triangles. Uh, it was question 22. So I'll put the link up there. You should probably check out that video first if you haven't already. So dilation is a geometric transformation, right? Where you have like one original triangle and they tell you to dilate it. So usually it's either enlargement or uh, shrinking it. But let's assume it's enlargement. So what you end up with is an image. It's another triangle which is called a similar triangle. And when we say similar, it means all three angles are the same, which makes all pairs of sides, corresponding sides, will be proportional. So if, for example, this is a three, four, and five centimeters, then the image will be, let's say you doubled it, it would be six, eight, and 10. It would be proportional for the corresponding sides. So that's the, the case that we're gonna have here. Here's the two triangles. So triangle ABC and triangle ADE will be similar triangles, meaning all their angles are the same. So if all their angles are the same, let's see which statement might be true. First of all, what it means is that E over here must be equal to C over here. Okay. The second angle that must be equal is this angle here and this angle here right? If I were to draw them on the separate, you know, maybe it's a little bit easier to see sometimes. Here it is. So angle E would be like angle C. And of course, this angle is obviously the same for both triangles because it's at the same corner. So it's this angle A and this angle A. So if you want all three pairs of angles to be the same, which condition must be true? Okay, let's go backwards because the, the answer is A, but let, let's talk about the rest. So D says, 2AB equals AD. That means AB is half of AD. It's B is the midpoint basically of AD. Now, is that necessarily always true for this to happen? And the answer is no, definitely not. It would only happen if the factor of dilation was two. It would only happen if AD is double the size, double the length of AB. And that's not necessary. Okay, it doesn't need to be, it can be triple, you know, it could be triple the size, right? If this one was one, for example, and this one can be three, you would still have similar triangles. So this one is not necessarily always true. The next one says AD is perpendicular to DE. Now this triangle pretty much looks perpendicular, but is that necessary? And the answer is no, because of course, these triangles, you know, maybe it looks like 90. Well, what if it's like 92 degrees? That's okay too. You will still get similar triangles when you do the dilation. Okay, if I was to draw an exaggerated, you know, slanted triangle, here you go. Maybe this is one triangle and then the other one is twice or three times the size or whatever it is. And there you go. They got no 90 degree angles and they're still similar triangles uh, who will be proportional and they will be, you know, one is gotten from the other. Uh, dilating the other. So this one is also not necessarily true. It might be, but it's not necessarily always true. AC equals CE. So this is exactly the same as the first condition, only they're talking about this line. If AC is equal to CE, they're saying that C is like the midpoint of AE. So it might be true, but it's not always true, you know, because the triangle ADE can be three times, four times, 10 times as big as ABC through dilation, and you'll still have similar triangles. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's twice as big and that, you know, AC is only half of AE. That's not always true, okay? It would only be true if the scaling factor was two. This one as well. It would only be true if the scaling factor is two, okay? Uh, as for A, why is A true? Because BC parallel to DE. So they're saying these horizontal lines are, are parallel. The reason why this must be true, okay? First of all, when you uh, carry out a dilation, there is no change in the orientation. That means there is no rotation or anything uh, of the triangle. The image is exactly aligned 
uh, the same way as your original triangle, right? So any horizontal lines will be horizontal and any, you know, this slanted line is exactly slanted the same way on the image. These ones must be parallel because these angles over here would not be equal otherwise, okay? In our two triangles over here, these angles are called corresponding angles and these angles are also called corresponding angles so they would only be congruent their measures would only be equal if these two lines were parallel okay if they were not parallel then these angles would not be the same they would not be equal they would not be congruent uh, we have a great video on uh, you know angles uh, in parallel lines and a transversal i'll put the link up there i recommend you check it out so the reason that a is the answer why a must always be true is for one thing when you do uh, carry out a dilation then you do not change the orientation of your shape second of all you need them to be parallel in order to have similar triangles in order to have the angles be all equal because they will only be equal if these lines are parallel okay and therefore the answer is a so let's move on to question 32 this question says there's a probability of 3 over 5 of rain on Sunday. The probability that it will rain on both Sunday and Monday is 3 out of 10. If it rains on Sunday, what's the probability that it will rain on Monday? Uh, again, we've seen a similar question with, um, you know, multiple events, probabilities of multiple events. In question, uh, you know, there was a tennis player. It's, it's the last video. It's 26 to 30. I'll put the link up there. Make sure to check it out because uh, we're going to do a probability tree so the way it works is this you got your first event let's say this is about raining on sunday right so this is sunday let's see what happens this is rain and this is no rain this is how you know the outcome of the first event and then you have your second event which is of course monday what are the possibilities on monday it can either again it can rain or no rain so we'll put those ones there. But now we're talking about Monday. So it can either rain or no rain. And it can either rain or no rain. Okay. Now we start to put the probabilities. So it says there is a 3 out of 5 probability of rain on Sunday. So that's what I'll put over here. 3 out of 5 rain on Sunday well it's either gonna rain or it's not gonna rain so the probability of not gonna rain will be two out of five you see because probability always must add up to one so each one of these you know clusters over here must add up to one so if this one is three-fifths this one must be two out of five now the next thing they tell me is the probability that it will rain on both Sunday and Monday is three out of ten so now we start to talk about outcomes right the outcome here would be Sunday rain, Monday rain. That means this path is rain, rain. This path here is rain, no rain. This path here is no rain and then rain. And here you got no rain, no rain, right? Uh, the way you calculate the probability of each outcome here is by multiplying the probabilities of the path all the branch so this means you multiply this probability times this probability to get the probability of rain rain now they've told me that the probability of rain rain is three out of ten right so if it's three out of ten what does that mean it means the probability here times the probability here let's call it x must equal 3 out of 10. So let me take that on the side and I'll say the probability of rain on Sunday times the probability of rain on Monday both happening will be equal to 3 out of 10. Okay? Again, I'll repeat. The 3 out of 10, since it's the probability of rain, rain, the way that you calculate this is by multiplying the probabilities of all the branches along that path, right? And this path is rain on Sunday and rain on Monday. So I need to multiply these probabilities to find this one. In probabilities, whenever you hear and, like rain on Sunday and on Monday, that means you need to multiply the probabilities, okay? If they tell you or, like rain on Sunday or rain on Monday, then you add the probabilities. 
but now they've told us and so I will multiply now with a little bit of algebra you can probably work this out so this is 3x over 5 equals 3 over 10 okay you can cross multiply to solve this or you can just easier to just multiply by 5 on both sides get rid of this one and you will end up with 3x equals 15 over 10 and you can divide by 3 on both sides divide by 3 on both sides and you end up with x equals 5 over 10 and you simplify that you get x equals 1 over 2 the answer of course being a so the probability that it rains on monday is 1 over 2 all right that's how you work a probability tree uh, again, I invite you to check out the previous video where we did the 26 to 30. Uh, let's move on to question 33. Okay, 33 says a rhombus has diagonals with length of 16 and 30. What is the length of a side of the rhombus? Um, so what's a rhombus, first of all? Rhombus is like a parallelogram where two pairs of sides are, are parallel. So those two are parallel and these two are parallel. Okay, it's basically like a like a rectangle that somebody... You know, it's hinged over here and hinged over here and then somebody gave it a push. So it used to be kind of like that. And then it got pushed that way to the right and, and it looks slanted right now. That's what a parallelogram is. And a rhombus is a parallelogram in which all the sides are equal. Okay, so this side, they're congruent. You know, their measures are equal. I should use the right vocabulary, right? I'm supposedly a teacher. Okay, so... Here's what happens with a rhombus. All the sides are, are congruent, but the diagonals, the diagonals will not be the same because this diagonal is pretty long, right? And this pink diagonal is a little bit shorter. But you might notice that the angle at the center is 90 degrees, okay? The way it works with a rhombus is there these diagonals have cut themselves exactly in half, okay? So that's what you need to know to solve this problem. So now let me take this, this triangle over here as, as a sample. Okay, let's say this is my sample. So I'll redraw it here. Let's try to keep the colors. So this is like the pink side and this is the purple side. And uh, let's pretend that blue is, is the black side. Okay, there you are. So we know now that this angle is 90 degrees as we said right and we also have been told that the <clears throat> the short diagonal was 16 so i know that this half side here this is 8 and this long diagonal i've been told is 30 so i know that this one is 15 so this one here is 15 so if they're asking me what's the length of a side so this blue blue black side over here what's the length all i have to do is carry out a pythagoras uh, calculation which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared now you'll recall that c squared must be the longest side it's it's the hypotenuse this is c and a and b well they're interchangeable they're just the legs uh, you can put whatever you want for a or b so i'll go ahead and make a 8 squared and this one is 15 squared and this is equal to c squared so 8 squared is 64 and 15 squared is 225 and that equals to c squared these two together are 289 equals c squared so to find c what i have to do is square root both sides and the square root cancels out the square and i'll get my answer c equals 17 which surprise surprise is a okay so what you need to retain from this is when you have the diagonals there in, in, a, in a rhombus then they're going to be cut in the middle and they're going to be cut at 90 degrees they're basically perpendicular by sectors of each other okay using that we we were able to find our triangle here and uh, you know bust our pythagoras theorem there you go let's do question 34. question 34 says identify the statistical data type for the following variable a medal won at the Olympics, gold, silver, bronze, or none. So let's go through each of these and, and we'll figure out the correct answer. It's always A. But anyway, nominal, what does that mean? So nominal, you need to think about it as uh, categorical. You can call it categorical, as in category. So it's like a non-numerical thing. It's like, uh, what's your favorite, uh, you know, flavor of, of ice cream? You can say strawberry or chocolate or vanilla. 
right? They have nothing to do with each other. They're mutually exclusive and you pick one and it's categorical. It's it's a name and they are named variables. Or like what kind of phone do you have? iPhone, Samsung or Huawei or, or whatever. That's categorical. That's what nominal is. Uh, they're mutually exclusive. They got nothing to do with each other and they are named variables. Ordinal is similar, okay? Ordinal is kind of like nominal, but the order does matter. That's why ordinal because order matters okay it's significant see here there's no order a strawberry chocolate vanilla but for ordinal it would be more like um you know say i'm ordering indian food or something and they they say do you want it mild medium or spicy right there is an order here yes they are named variables but there's an order or or you're doing a customer satisfaction survey and uh, they ask you how was it it was it poor um again medium or it was great right there is an order here great is the best and poor is the worst that's what ordinal means it could also be first second third right we know what this is. This is the first, this is the second, this is the third. So that's what ordinal means. They could be named variables, but the order does matter. The order is significant. Okay, let's take interval here. So interval, when you see interval, you have to think, uh, first of all, it's numerical, numerical scale. And when they say interval, you need to think of like the difference is significant. And I'll show you what that means. The most typical example, <clears throat> excuse me, the most typical example that you'll see is usually temperature. So why they say temperature is, is the typical example is because you can have 20 degrees Celsius and you can compare that with 50 degrees Celsius. And 50 is higher than 20 and it's actually 30 degrees more, right? It's 30 degrees more. And I can do the same thing with 40 degrees and 70 degrees, right? The difference between them is the same. This is a scale. So this is 30 between them is the same as the 30 between them. So the difference is significant and that's what the interval variables will be. Uh, it can also be something like your SAT scores or, or things like that. But here for temperature, there's one main difference between interval and ratio is that in ratio, it's let's say same as interval, same as interval but also includes zero zero as nothing and let me tell you what i mean by that a temperature of zero degrees a temperature of zero degrees does not mean no heat it's not like zero means there's nothing there it's just a temperature right it's a temperature of zero that's pretty cold but it doesn't mean that there's no heat or there's no temperature right so this scale when you talk about interval even though it's numerical and, and it's ordered and there's an interval but zero does not mean nothing for ratio variables zero does mean nothing as in let's say something weighs zero kilograms well that means it's got no mass it's zero it, zero literally means nothing okay or or if something is zero meters tall that means it's got no height so zero does mean zero. Um, that's the difference between interval and ratio. So I hope uh, that's a little bit clearer. Um, when it comes to this specific question, the answer they gave, they say it's A. They say it's nominal. But in my opinion, that's not correct. And I would have said this is ordinal because everybody knows at the Olympics, gold is better than silver, than bronze, than none. Right? There's a clear order to me, um, even though it is... Uh, named variables gold silver bronze but it's clear that gold is the winner it's like saying first second third or, or none right maybe that none you know means there's no order because none could be a bunch of people and we don't know their order anyways let me know what you think in the comments uh, but either way i hope you understand you know the definition of each one uh, and you understand the examples and uh, yeah let's move on to question 35 okay here's the last question can you believe it we're almost done this test Points A at 3 and 4 and B at 4 and 3 and C at 2 and 1 are graphed below. What are the coordinates of B prime, C prime? That means the images of B and C. After BC undergoes a dilation centered at point A with scale factor 2. 
So again, I'll invite you to check out our, I guess, second video, uh, questions six to 10. I'll put the link up there. Uh, we did a question on dilation. I explained the whole thing. So we'll go through it again briefly. Dilation means either you're, you know, expanding or shrinking something. You're scaling something. Here they say with a factor of two. And since two is bigger than one, that means we're going to make it longer. We're going to make this BC is going to become bigger. And the center is A. Uh, why the center matters is because... I'll draw some lines here and you'll see when you are considering this one the center that means you are going to scale along this line so C prime will be somewhere along this line and B prime will be somewhere along this line here but the question is where do they end up well if you got a factor of two that means C prime will be two times as far away from A as C and B prime will be twice as far from A as B, okay? And the way that you do it is pretty simple. Let's start with B, okay? B is one away to the right and one down. So B prime is going to have to be two to the right and two down. And I'll know I'm correct if my answer, my point that I find is on that same line. It's got to be aligned uh, with, with AB like that. Okay, so let's try it with C. C is one to the left and one, two, three down. So if it's a factor of two, then I know it's got to be two to the left and then six down. So C is going to end up all the way here, C prime. Here is C prime. And that means that your line B prime, C prime is over here. There you go. You'll notice that uh, the lines BC and B prime C prime are actually parallel, right? We talked about this uh, when you carry out a dilation, uh, you will keep the same orientation, so they end up being parallel. Um, anyway, you can see that B prime is at five and two, and C prime is at one minus two, making the answer surprise, surprise, A. And that's that. That's the uh, last question of the test. I uh, hope you found that helpful. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And uh, make sure to leave me comments. Uh, I'm going to be starting to solve the uh, 2021 specimen paper as soon as I can. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.